Greetings from India. On the evening of September the 10th, various activists and concerned citizens, including myself, closed our campaign, which was conducted under the slogan, G20, Give Our Kids Back. We conducted the campaign for the entire duration of the G20 summit, being hosted in New Delhi, India, from the 8th to the 10th of September. This was a last minute plan, but we managed to get together across the world from New Delhi to Ahmedabad to London to Philadelphia. On the opening day of the summit, mothers of the International Support Not Separation and Global Women's Strike Networks demonstrated outside the Indian High Commission in London and the Crossroads Women's Center in Philadelphia. They demanded justice against the child protective services of the Global North countries. These include the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and France, and Germany. They demanded justice against the child protective services of the Global North countries. These are countries that sit on the G20 with the countries of the Global South. They spoke out against the disproportionate removal of children of Global South families who come to work to Global North countries. This is an issue that directly relates to the central concern of the G20, international economic and commercial activity. They also demanded that Global North governments stop taking children from citizens of their own countries with the disproportionate targeting of mothers who are low income, single mothers, disabled mothers, mothers of color, and victims of domestic violence. They demanded that G20 Global North governments take away their poverty and not their children. They also said that refusing a return home of foreign children in state custody was an act of genocide. They reminded the Global North of the racist and sexist history of child removals, including by colonial powers of indigenous children. In India, I went on hunger strike in New Delhi and Dhara Shah, whose baby was confiscated by German child services, went on hunger strike in Ahmedabad. I conducted my hunger strike under the banner G20 Government's Child Services Torture Mothers Worldwide. I had to do this in my home as public protests were banned in, in Delhi by the Indian government for a fortnight before and during the summit, which ironically showcases the leaders of the so-called free world and the world's premier human rights organization, the United Nations. For the whole week leading up to the summit, there were letters issued to G20 delegates and newspaper articles by eminent citizens of India, including retired judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts of India, including two ex-High Court Chief Justices and former foreign ministers, asking for the international community to start a discussion on the return of foreign children to their home countries when they are confiscated from their parents by child services abroad. Using Google Translate, I was able to compose speeches which I posted on YouTube during my hunger strike in Arabic and Turkish, directly addressing the Arab and Turkish G20 delegates. I also made a speech directly addressing the African Union, which was inducted into the G20 this year. I made this special appeal to the Turkish and African delegates as migrants and expatriate workers from both these places are prejudicially targeted by child welfare services of the Global North. I included the Arab delegates in my appeal as the Arab nations, along with those of Turkey and Africa, have a family culture that is closer to ours in India. I appeal to the Arab, Turkish and African states as a woman and as a mother. I appeal to them because I believe that unlike the global north, chivalry is not dead in their societies and such an appeal would be understood and taken in the right spirit. That is the spirit that respects the dignity of motherhood, that has compassion for its sacrifices and knows the worth of mother's love. I pay my respects to Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King, whose teachings inspire me in this struggle. Martin Luther King spoke of a beloved community in which, in his beautiful words, quoting the Bible, he said that justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. In the beloved community, there would never be such a harsh and brutal system as child protective services that only looks to condemn and punish. Any kind of social intervention in an open and democratic society has to be informed with respect for the dignity of the human being, every human being, and with compassion. These are completely missing in the child protection system. I want to tell all mothers that are suffering out there 
I have done this for you. You are my inspiration. Sagareka, Dhara, mothers who are too scared to come out into the open. M in Germany, A in Australia. There are so many names. You will get out of this. Your suffering is the stepping stone from which we will reach a greater justice. Stay strong. To all my companions, especially from the International Network of Support Not Separation, Martin Luther King spoke of creative protest, and that is what we need to do. All the space for protest has been hogged by the big NGOs and by the government itself. In a curious irony, the welfare state has taken away the space for individuals to stand up and talk about what they need for their welfare. The privatization of welfare with public-private partnerships has added the force of money to this exclusion of the common woman and the common man. So traditional modes of protest are no longer available to us or are severely restricted. Human rights, which were evolved for the individual, the lone citizen, to be able to stand up against all the might of the state, have now been colonized and cornered by the state itself. Civil rights organizations and NGOs that are supposed to speak for us only speak for themselves. They're only interested in invitations to big international summits like the G20 and to invitations from parliamentary committees and other establishment bodies. They're only interested in implementing schemes and standards that are developed in the elite universities and think tanks of the global north and lobbied for by professional lobbyists and billionaire philanthropists with grand designs to save the world, but little understanding of the lived experience and the need for engagement with the people that they're supposed to be saving. We have little hope on this issue from the UNICEF, as this confiscatory and punitive model of child protection has been evolved by UNICEF and it only speaks to defend it. We have little hope on this issue from Global North Ministers for Children as they only speak to defend their child services which function under their ministerial departments. This is what I mean by the voice of the people targeted by public welfare interventions being excluded. In these circumstances, we have to be creative in our protest. I hope that you will get ideas from what I did as I get ideas from your tireless work exposing CPS. We must keep coming up with new ideas. We have to connect with more and more groups around the world. We must build up our movement so that there is a protest by mothers against child snatching by the state somewhere around the globe for each day of the year. We will build our movement person by person from country to country. If we stay united and determined, the mothers will rise up. The mothers will rise up in the cities and in the villages and in the forests and on the islands. From Asia to the Americas, from Europe to Africa, the mothers will rise up. Because what we are seeing now, the callous and senseless removal of children from their mother's arms, is an atrocity against women that has no parallel in history. All the mothers, I'm here for you. I'm not here only for the sweet little housewives from India that fall into the bewildering child protection systems in the United Kingdom and the United States and Norway and Australia and Germany. I'm here for all of you, wherever you are, with your children snatched by the state. I'm with all mothers, even those who have been told that they're bad mothers. I don't care if you're a drug addict. I don't care if you're a prostitute. I don't care if they say that you neglected or abused your child. I don't care about any of these things. I know the system is unfair and exaggerates. I know that it does not go after the people that actually commit crimes against children. I'm here for you. Nothing can replace a mother's love. Never forget that. Nothing can replace a mother's love. Certainly not paid foster carers. Your mother's love, this God-given force that overwhelms you and comes gushing out of you like a force of nature, needs no justification and nor must it be subjected to any man-made conditions. Mother's love is a gift of nature that forms the foundation of human society and indeed of all life on earth. It is in and of itself a vast and inexhaustible resource for your child and for all of society. There should be no intervention in parental care on vague grounds like emotional harm and attachment disorder. 
These are psychological theses that are not even part of the worldview of the overwhelming majority of the world's families. And we in the Global South have happy families, happier than those of the West for all its riches and technology. The Western ideal of personal happiness has to be seen in context of different cultural ideals of the Global South, like spiritual upliftment, communal solidarity, filial service and filial sacrifice. There are many different ways in which life, whether for children or adults, can be valuable and worthwhile. The Global North has to stop imposing its attitudes and preferences on the rest of the world. The Global North has to recognize the essential humanity of those who are different from them. This is not at all a question of moral relativism, but of humility and imagination and genuine introspection. These are the broader issues connected with assessing families and childhoods that must be confronted if a true solution is to be found. On the specific issue of child protection, any intervention by the state for children has to fall shy of removing them from or minimizing their contact with their biological family. No intervention for children can be any good for children if it does not take into account their family and see children as part of a composite whole including their family, community of heritage, culture and nationality. If child services believe, and I very much doubt that such a belief is correct, but if they believe that mothers and fathers in the global north have lost the natural human tendency of overwhelming love and concern for their children, then this is not a problem of any one parent, but of the society and culture that produced them. The solution is not to snatch children from individual parents, but to introspect and change as a society. In the end, I would like to thank God for giving me the strength to carry out my hunger strike for the entire duration of the G20 summit in Delhi, from the night before the guests began to arrive, September the 7th, to the night after, to the night of, uh, after the um, guests left in the afternoon of September the 10th. Every step is a learning. This is only a beginning. We will come together again. G20 governments, if you don't respect us, expect us.